In this video, I'm going to be attempting to make a first person shooter in Rust and Bevy using their ECS system. ECS stands for Entity Component System and it is a powerful way to create games which deviates from the usual object oriented approach of making games and uses a more data oriented method. This enables ECS to be extremely efficient and much more powerful than traditional methods of game development. The only con of ECS is how tedious it is to use and the fact that it is relatively new to the game development space. So you can imagine that it is going to be quite difficult even to create a first person shooter using it. I'm going to be using ECS in conjunction with Bevy, a new game engine capitalizing on using Rust, an innovative language which many programmers have fallen in love with, along with ECS to provide a unique development experience. Without any further ado, let's hop into the video. The first thing that I needed to do was to set up a camera controller and a way to handle player physics. So I quickly whipped up the scene with a simple first person controller and some falling objects to demonstrate the viability of a physics library that I had picked up called Bevy Rapier 3D. It proved to be quite good, giving the user lots of control over the specificalities of physics as well as the ability to raycast, which I used for detecting when the player was on the ground. The movement was feeling a little stiff, so I made the player slightly accelerate and decelerate when moving around. This would make the movement feel more satisfying and realistic. The next thing that I did was decrease the amount of control the player could have while jumping. I decreased the linear damping of the object as well as the movement potential in the air. After this, I also scaled the scene down because Bevy has a built-in invisible maximum radius for its point lights, which don't really cover that much. Ignoring the fact that the game looks like the default cube in Blender when first opened, I decided to start adding the ability to shoot in the game. You can see that I've created a simple shooting exercise to test out the shooting mechanics that I've created. I added red spheres which will for the moment represent our enemy. I slapped on a crosshair to the center of our screen using Bevy's UI system. There are many types of shooting in FPS games. The most common kind is called hit scan. When the player presses the shoot button, an imaginary line between the player and where they are aiming is projected. This line can be offset if any imprecision or recoil in the gun is needed. This is called a raycast. Anything that the line intersects at the moment that the player hits the fire button will be shot. And this is how the shooting will work in our game. There are other types of shooting in FPS games like projectile shooting which will simulate an actual object with velocity and sometimes even acceleration. To account for losses and collision from projectiles moving too fast and teleporting from in front to the back of an object, some games will shoot a line cast between the object and its future position each frame so as not to lose any precision. Other games might even use hybrid versions of these mechanics and have projectile detection at farther positions and hit scan in close proximity, but we will just be using pure hit scan to not complicate things. Another thing to keep in mind is that the visual projectile on screen or the bullet tracer in more technical terms is not actually an accurate line drawn between the player to its crosshair. This tracer is actually an imaginary line drawn from the gun to the point being hit to look more visually appealing and realistic as opposed to a projectile coming out from the center of the screen. This would be accurate, however it would not be visually realistic or at all satisfying to the player. Now that we have created a base off of which we can create an FPS game, it was time to add shooting mechanics such as recoil, spray patterns, as well as creating the 3D model of the gun. So I hopped into Blender, a 3D modeling program to create a primary firearm similar to the AK in CSGO or the Vandal in Valorant. As we have this time lapse of 3D modeling running in the background, I'm going to explain how spray patterns work. Basically, all of our bullets will be offsetted in a certain pattern by changing the direction of each raycast by a certain amount to simulate recoil. Many games love to randomly generate recoil or rely on randomness past a certain threshold of bullets. The game that comes to mind is Valorant, which contains almost perfect accuracy before the fourth bullet hits with its flagship rifle, the Vandal. But I see this as an easy way out. Games like CSGO have set spray patterns that are randomized only by a certain factor to raise the skill ceiling of the game. That is why even though this is a proof of concept single player game, I'm going to minimize the randomization in spray patterns because I'm just such a cool person. A good rule of thumb when designing a game is to rely minimally on RNG and overall randomness. Now as we are finishing up with our gun model, I just want to run it through with you all that this gun that I modeled is by no means an accurate representation of a real gun. Everything is in one piece and the topology is just not at all professional with how weirdly structured the edges are. If you're going to model a gun, I do not recommend following what I am doing right here. Anyway, now that we have a 3D model of the gun, we can add it into the game. As you can see here, I also have added a low resolution placeholder texture for the ground and for the walls that we are going to be temporarily using. The gun generates bullet holes which are just quads sticking a little bit out of the wall and they are generated using the normal vector given to us from the raycast of our bullet. I am demonstrating the spray pattern mechanic and how it can be controlled. Of course, I'm only a silver 2 player in Valorant, wow. so I do not do the best controlling the spray as opposed to people who are actually into FPS games. 
Now that we basically had a fully functioning FPS system aside from enemies, it was time to add animations because the game was looking a bit stiff right now. In order to do this, I had to learn how to use Blender's action system to create the individual animations for the game. This took a little bit longer than I intended because I never had to use Blender's action system due to being spoiled by Unity's animation system, which allowed you to set up the animations frame by frame in the editor rather than require you to make actions inside Blender itself. After I did this, it was a simple matter of exporting the 3D model and figuring out a way to animate it inside the game. Bevy supports a file type called GLTF, which is one of the more popular file types to use in games, alongside FBX files and OBJ files. There are also different types of GLTF files, which can be a bit confusing. GLTF is storing the object in JSON while GLB stores it in binary. I'm going to be using GLB because it has a file size that is 33% less than GLTF, so it should theoretically be more efficient. After that, I struggled along with Bevy's examples until I found an example where a fox in a GLB file was being animated through Bevy. It took a while to get working because I kept trying to tag the animation using the action name, but I misread and it was instead just simply animation 1, animation 2, and animation 3, which was a bit confusing as it sounds kind of difficult to organize. So at the end of this little wasteful adventure that took such a long time, all I had gained was making the gun move back and forth, which I could have just accomplished with some procedural code. A large picture of this was great though because I had now figured out how to use 3D animations in Bevy. Another change that I added was making the spray a little easier to control because I had realized that the spread was way too much considering this was the primary weapon in the game. The gun currently had infinite ammo and the spray pattern resetting whenever the bullets reached the magazine size was starting to get on my nerves. So it was now time to add a reloading system to the game. I hopped into Blender to create a reloading animation which was pretty easy due to my separation of the magazine and the gun through the armature. I added the animation when the player reloads and a text down below showing your amount of bullets, and we could finally reload. Until this point, I had not accounted for the spray pattern when the player was moving, so I just increased the randomization factor so that running around and shooting wouldn't be OP and it would be more realistic. Something that I had never actually realized that was built into Rust was a function called cargo fix. This removed so many warnings from my code as it basically fixed all the warnings automatically. I went from around 70 errors to zero warnings, which really made the project feel a whole lot cleaner. Rust also had a function called cargo FMT, which formats all the code really nicely, which I think is really well implemented. It saved me lots of code from looking messy. Now that we had finished creating the actual shooting system, the two final steps are to add enemies and to add a map to the game. I'm going to first add enemies because the map can be easily added in the end. So I hopped into Blender to create a 3D model for the enemy. I whipped up a very strange looking enemy. Just kidding, he's very handsome. He has a chad jawline and looks like he gets all the ladies. I rigged him up and added a gun model to his armature so it didn't look like we were shooting innocent civilians. While the 3D modeling time lapse runs in the background, I decided on making this game a more target practice sort of game because the competitive mechanics that I've created would go to waste in a single player game. Your movement potential is severely limited with the controller, which I've done for a reason. It would not function well in a single player game. This game will be designed to be sort of a warm up similar to playing deathmatch in Valorant, creating aim exercises in CSGO, or playing aim labs for a while before going into a competitive queue. Of course the main goal of aim training in FPS games is mostly to hit headshots, so I added colliders to the head body and leg and made the head deal the most damage, instantaneously killing the enemy. It takes 5 shots to the body to kill him and 10 shots to the legs to kill him. When his health reaches 0, he plays a death animation and flops to the ground while simultaneously deleting all of the colliders on his body. The approach that I'm going to take for making this map in the game is to create one large 3D model in Blender and give it a collider, because this is the most simple way that we can create a map, and I wanted to leverage the physics library that I'm using to make things easier in development. It actually worked out pretty well and I had a map in no time. I added lights and made the enemies get up again after a certain amount of time and with that we are finally done with our game. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. You can also join my discord server and with that have a good day. Oh and tell me your video editing criticisms in the comments because I'm not very good at video editing.